Interactive Cat Pinball. I know. It's a good idea, unless it isn't. It's a live stream business model profit thing with fuzzy little critters. What what better way to uh, to make money and entertain your animals all day long? So it, it's a live stream idea, you know, like a Twitch or a YouTube thing where people can interact with your fuzzy critters and pay to play with them, basically, give them treats uh, and win prizes. I mean, it's a whole kind of crazy bananas thing. I actually have about a few different ideas kind of revolving around this concept. But, oh, it could be done with puppies, too. Big dogs? That's probably a big cup of note, but they'll just tear it up, everything apart. But kittens and cats, are it's definitely a, a good uh, good approach to this idea. Puppies, too, but who knows? Anyway, let's go ahead and, and take a look at this. Oh, by the way, uh, in the description, I do have a link to an interactive blueprint. That So if you want to explore on your own or, you know, kind of stop listening to me and just go that direction, I totally get it. So by all means, feel free to explore while I'm talking. We're just going to kind of overview the whole thing. So here's a concept I sketched up. And yeah, I'm calling cats and balls or you, you probably can come up with a better name. So let's talk about the main components other than, you know, the cats, right? So it's an interactive chat controlled or viewer controlled pinball machine where they can launch uh, balls, right? So you see the ball here. This is the, you know, launch mechanism could be kinetic, some kind of spring system. We'll talk about that in a moment. So the idea is that these cats are hanging out in this room and, you know, we have a nice little perch for them to hang out, maybe a little carpety thing, a beacon for light effects. You have a speaker that can make sound effects. We have a uh, treat dispenser. I would probably buy an off the shelf treat dispenser and then modify it. Uh, it's been done before. If not, you can make your own, but it should dispense a, a treat, probably not three treats. That's, that's a lot of treats, but maybe just one, you know. And there's a remote treat dispenser right here that would distract them away from the play field. So you see how we have some variability. We have lights, we have treats, we have sound, that kind of thing. On the play field, you have a deflector. This deflector would be chat controlled, user controlled. Uh, and then we have some obstacles. So you can pivot the deflector and the obstacles would change. They, they would reposition themselves maybe on each shot, maybe later, maybe randomly between shots. You know, we have to discuss that. And of course you have the, uh, the scoring area, which is just a slot based kind of a Plinko kind of system where they get different prizes and depending on where it lands, it might, they might get balls to shoot again. They might get points they might get some physical prize that they can purchase in your store or your online store, that kind of thing. One, a couple key in, key points to show here, though, is that this should be clear, right? You, they definitely need to see where they go. And you definitely want the feeder mechanism that shows the ball stacking up to be shot visible because we want reliability. We want the viewer not to have a miss, miss shot. So we want them to feel confident that, oh, I see this is queued up nicely and I don't see any gaps or things failing because my thought is that you're going to turn this on, you're going to set it up, make sure it works, and then you're going to let it run. And you don't want to, you know, you don't want to have to maintain it all day long. So that's that's kind of the key components of this. Let's talk about the gameplay, the, the flow of it. You know, there's a lot of ways to do this. You could, you know, this is kind of, you know, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, PHP backend, uh, you play the game. There's a lot of ways to do this. This is, I'd start with a simple approach and evolve it from there. And, uh, but this could be a phone app. You know, I visualize it being on a website and they just link to it. And this allows them to, you know, see their user ID. There's a whole authorization process. They see the number of balls they have. They see their uh, treat number of treat tokens they have. Treat tokens are absolutely the best tokens. And then from there, they can actually buy balls, buy tokens, you know, do their thing. So what they do is they set their shot up. So what they'll do is they'll go, okay, I'll set the deflector angle and you'll give them a range. 
You set the launch speed. And of course, this is very bare bones. I'd probably make it a little more graphically, graphically exciting. Uh, so they set the launch speed. If you have a connect, connect type launcher, and then whether to deploy a decoy treat, right? Or the remote treat. So the decoy treat is the one above the ping ball machine that kind of throws a, a treat onto the play field. And then the one that is actually remotely. And then a sound effect. You have to do a sound effect. So the sound effect and the light are very important to kind of let the cats know, hey, something's going on. But you don't make it super loud. Just enough to be, oh, there's something going on here. So they pick their sound. I just threw a few in there, you know, like a little mouse, another cat, a bell, a bird, a human saying something. I don't know. And they say launch and launch puts their shot into the queue because there might be many queues and you should have an overlay that shows the queue, what's going on. And that way people can kind of see what's happening. So after you set your shot up and launch it, then you have some fun things that happen. Now, all this I sequenced it with numbers just to describe it, but all this kind of happens at the same time. So it's pretty quick. So after you set the shot, you're going to have the deflector set its angle, right? And then the obstacles are going to rotate into random position. You don't control the obstacles so much. They just kind of randomize. Now, frequency of those moving is something to concern yourself with because if those are always going to be random with each shot, then there's not a lot of control or they can't do a lot of strategy planning, right? So you're, you're really going to want um, to maybe have gameplay that only changes that field once in a while. So you might set it up every, say, you know, pick a random number, every six shots or every, you know, pick a random number randomly every time you regenerate it. So maybe it's six the first time, 15 the next time, who knows? Or you could do it once a session, it's up to you. you. You know, you'll figure it out. But the idea is you set that a shot up. But you got to allow for strategy from the, sh the, the viewer's perspective. So they rotate, if they're supposed to, into position. And then we'll have the beacon go off. And I'm thinking, you know, like, like I said, a 12-volt car beacon kind of thing, a little orangey beacon light that just flashes around. And maybe the sound effect goes off next. And then it deploys the treat token. And there's that treat token, and there's the remote treat token. He's distracted. And then the ball launches. And I like, to, I like to have a clear tube on this so that the user can see the ball travel on the tube. So they can see not only the balls that are down here, but they can see the ball, the ball travel through the tube so it sees that their shot is actually going to launch. And the last little bit, of course, is depending on what happens on the field. You know, maybe the cat knocks it out. Maybe the cat um, lets it fly through. And then at the end, you get a score. So if you get into one of the slots, you score. And, you know, you can pick your reward system. I have some really good ideas for reward systems. Uh, I'll do that. I'll talk about that on Patreon a little bit. But, you know, you give them points. You give them balls. You give them some kind of physical thing. I mean, maybe they collect points to cash in on your store for something fun. You can play a lot of games here. You want to make it engaging as well. Now, this brings up a really big, and you probably already figured it out. There's a big issue with this. And the biggest issue is, and I got an idea to fix it, is the ball might be knocked out of the field. That's the whole point. You got these little micro lions running around in there, knocking the ball out. So you shoot, you try to distract, trying to score, but you know, it's, it's gladiator style. You're, you're in the arena, right? You're not doing so well, but if you score, it's easy. Um, but if you don't, we don't know where the ball's at. We don't know anything. So my idea is to give a shot about 30 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds. So it launches. Once it exits the tube, then we have about 30 seconds for us to decide if, if that ball is going to score or not. If it falls through the field, it scores. If it doesn't within 30 seconds, like a cat knocked it out, then you're done. You, you didn't get a score. However, there's another problem, and that is... Maybe a cat's laying in the field. Maybe they're taking a nap. Maybe the cat's got smart and formed a fuzzy great wall that you just can't get by. And so the balls start collecting on there. They just won't go by. They're like, oh, we got this. We don't have to work. We'll just wait for the treats to come out. And then we stop the balls. It's, it's a win-win. 
I can see the conspiracy theories on that one. But the, the point is that we can deal with that. So what you do is that when a shot is, when the balls are released, they'll be released either between shots or like, let's say no one's shooting and the balls, the cat gets up because, you know, they want to drink a water or something. Then all the balls, the one or two or many balls fold down into the scoring slots, right? Also, similarly, somebody could be shooting and the cat gets up to get the ball, which is more likely the case, and the other ball falls. So either someone who did the shot gets a double score or no one's shooting and they're scoring going on there, right? So the thought is to encourage viewership, to encourage people to watch the stream and be excited about it, as well as just trying to, to, to participate. I would probably, what you do is you, if the person, if there's a shot and they get a double score, that person gets the, the points or the rewards. And then what you do at the same time, because it's a double shot, the whole, everybody viewing the stream gets something, right? Maybe a ping pong ball or two to play with, maybe points, you know, not as much as the person doing the shot, but you get the idea. If no one is shooting, then everyone gets that reward, that base, re not the reward, but the, you know, the ping pong ball or the the smaller reward. But the idea is that encourages people to watch the stream. And the higher your viewership goes up, the higher you go up in the uh, catalog or, you know, whatever. You get it, right? So that's kind of how we deal with that. All right, let's talk a little bit about construction. So you've seen these bits. We have a speaker, right? That's the speaker. We have the cat treat dispenser. We have the, uh, the beacon. And most of this makes sense to you, I know. But let's talk about some of the key aspects of this that's really important, I think. And one of them is this part right here. This part right here. This is actually a brake beam sensor. And so you want to, your system should, sit to, should detect when that ball exits the tube. So you know that's a successful shot. That way, if there's a failure, maybe your spring's bad. If you're using like a kinetic wheel launcher of some sort, maybe a motor's going out. So you can detect if there's a failure. And the idea is to make this as reliable and as safe as possible. Safe for the cats, reliable for the user, right? So we want to detect if that ball left, and this is a great way to do it. There is an issue with cats pawing at the brake beam sensor because, you know, cats are super intelligent. They're just faking us. They're just tricking us, right? So they might go, okay, I'm going to do this all day long with my paw and watch, watch everything go bananas. But the odds that you could do a timing sequence where, okay, they just launched the ball. We're going to detect that it left. The chances of that happening is pretty small, or you can put it in a pocket. So you could move the brake beam sensor maybe a little lower, like a little bit down in there or somewhere. All right. The kinetic launcher. There's a couple things here. So like I said, there's a, there's a spring version uh, a connect launcher. I visualize a connect launcher because people have control over the speed, which gives you another parameter to play with. The more control you can give people, the more fun it is, right? Otherwise, just shooting, hopefully, you know, it works, right? Slot machine style, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I do have an idea for a gravity type launching system. I'll, I'll talk about that on Patreon a little bit if you're curious about that. But one of the key aspects of this, of course, is the... Um, the gating of the ball. So I oversimplified it here. This is just a servo with a little arm thing. This is oversimplified, but you would need a little slightly more complicated mechanism to regulate the balls in there. Now they're sloped into it. Everything, get gravity to work for you, right? So all this, all these balls are sloped down as well as the ones on the side. So everything, gravity kind of feeds it into place. And then the, the servo will regulate the ball to cue up the next ball. And of course, you should probably have a sensor in there. And if you have questions about that, you can ask me, but that's the idea. And here, the other things that are interesting is you have the trap, the ball, the hole, there's a hole in the base of it that traps the ball as it falls in. And here I drew, and I did this mainly for uh, presentation reasons, but I drew a big brake beam sensor in each pocket. You need one so you can register the score. But you do not put it where I put it because that would be a bad idea because you can see that the cat's going to reach their hand in there and hit that a million times. And suddenly you realize that you're in the hole because everyone's been scoring like crazy bananas points, right? 
So you're going to want you're going to want to put the brake beam sensor below into the hole. So the hole is going to have a taper probably, and then right on that exit point, you're going to have it drop through and hit that brake beam sensor, and you'll say, "Oh, they scored." And that also means because of the way the cats are constructed, you know, they don't have like little octopusy arms there. They they can't reach in there. They're going to uh, they're going to uh, they're not going to be able to trip that sensor. So. And then, of course, you can see that I have a shield here that keeps the cats out of it. So you keep the cats out of it, make it a 90 degree angle to get in there. You're pretty safe from, from the cat bits getting in there. Safety. So obstacles, the idea with an obstacle is it just has some weird shape and it pivots. This little dot in there is showing you where the servo might be placed, right? So they pivot around. And like I said, it happens randomly once in a blue moon. So people have to create a strategy around that and try and score. Um, however, cats can be sitting on it. Cats get, get their paws on it. So we want to be careful with those little fuzzy guys. So what we're going to do is make a slip connection. So rather than attaching the servo motor right on the actual, the actual uh, obstacle, we're going to have a slip connection so that there's pressure on there. It just doesn't move. So if the cat's like sleeping on the thing, it's going to try to turn it, but it's not. It's going to, you're just going to go slip. So you want to do, excuse me, snag attack there. You just want to do uh, slip connections for all those. This is the other safety issue I, I was interested in is some kind of, def so this is the deflector, right? Um, and the dash line shows kind of a, a shield on top of that to keep the cats from getting in there. The deflector should be not slip connection. It should be something more like um, uh, very precise. And you want to get that's to give the user an opportunity to be very precise about their shot. They know they've been working it for a while. They know they want to do 25.3 degrees. We can't do that maybe so much, but 25 degrees. And then they'll play with it from there. So my thought is to recess that deflector in, right? Recess it into the sidewalls of the chassis and then put a deflector shield, a shield that they can't really get do much in there. So hopefully that would keep the cats from getting in there and uh, causing a problem or uh, getting injured. So here's a side view to give you a clear vision of what I'm thinking. I should kind of show you the camera view there, kind of a top down. And you want that because you're going to have, you're going to do overlays. So uh, if you use something like OBS Studio or similar, you could do overlays that shows a, a you know, a, a, a cue. You can show scoring of points. You can have a, uh, a winner list. You know, you could do all kinds of fun little things and it'll be fun. So I have some kind of hopper here. This is uh, something that holds a vast quantity of balls. Now, if you do, if you think about it, if you do a shot every 30 seconds, you know, to a minute, and you want your cats to work, how long do you want them to work? They, there's a cat union probably out there, so you might want to keep it below eight hours. But if you were doing 10 hours, we're talking, what, 1,200, uh, 1200 shots, 1,200 balls. So you have to hold something around 1,000 balls, depending on how much time you want the cats to put into it, uh, into the stream. So some kind of hopper. Now, I, over here, I have a hopper of ping pong balls. I use an agitator that has about 1,000 ping pong balls in there, and then they feed down into the system to get it to follow by. He's a problem. But the, uh, that's how I do it. But there's another way to do it. You can also just make a tube or, a, or some kind of ramp system that ramps them all the way up the wall, right? And you don't, that can be off screen. You don't need to have that in the camera shot. So you can load it up with this nice little gravity feed kind of a side winder kind of situation that'll feed them down all the way down into your pinball machine. So you have the drop in there and then you can see they're angled all the way down to where they launch. Couple things. So here you can see the drop hole, the drop holes on the inside. And so when they fall through and we talked about the brake beam sensor being on the inside, right? And they should, I would put some kind of slope in there so it forces all the balls to the back. So the idea is the inside of the pinball machine will collect the scoring balls, right? And that way you don't have a mess all over your floor. You're going to have some flying around because the cats will swat them out of the play field. But this is the idea. So, and if you look at it like a four by six playing field and you run some numbers, you'll find that it holds, you know, over a thousand ping pong balls technically and not likely 
you're not going to have a thousand ping pong balls in there unless it's uh, there's a strike with the cat union or, you know, they're on holiday. You never know. You could also in the back, open the back up here and just have a catch on the back to extend it. So you get it. You're super smart. So that's the idea there. And that's that's basically the gist. Um, the this is kind of the hardware software system. So you're like, you're like, great, Jeff, that's great. But this what's going on in the back end? Well, this is the back end stuff. And there's like I said, there's a lot of ways to do it. I'm showing you how I work the, the interactive bots I have in the stream here. You know what I do in stream on Twitch, but uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. There's not a better ways. Just does it work? Right. So let's cover that briefly. And I kind of it's an overview. There's some details in the middle, but it's not very hard. All of it's pretty much free and also very there's a lots of tutorials and instruction to flow, fall through. So on your computer, you install a node server. That's what I do. I have a node server. It's just a software package that runs a little server and the node server runs JavaScript applica Java, JavaScript modules and JavaScript code. So you can write code to control stuff, right? And then you install something called uh, TMI.js. TMI.js uh, allows you to talk to Twitch in this case. You would install something similar or write your own code to talk to say YouTube or whatever platform you're streaming on, right? So some way to talk to chat. And this is important to give feedback, to allow for chat control commands. Uh, my idea with a command generator app, which is a super simple way to do it, so you don't have to deal with you know different messaging systems like MQTT or whatever. Um, it's a simple way to communicate to chat and allow chat to control your play field. So that TMI will, con will connect to your live stream people and talk to chat. Johnny Five is the magic sauce. This is the one I really like. Johnny Five allows you to talk to Arduinos. And then you can write JavaScript code to control the Arduinos. You don't have to sit there and write some C code in firmware and upload it to Arduino and then tweak it and rinse and repeat. And there's all the shuffling around. So you have C code over here. You have JavaScript over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have all these things. And it's just a mess. So this is nice because what this allows you to do is allows you to write just JavaScript code. All the code is in one place in JavaScript. In JavaScript, you know, you can find someone to write that for you if you want. And there's a lot of instructions out there. There's a cookbook. There's a whole website dedicated to the API. It's very simple. So you have your, your pinball machine. You have your Arduino talking to Johnny Five with all the wonderful sensors and actuators, the thing that makes it, brings it to life and, you know, all that fun stuff. And then your code, this is the magic sauce. This is, well, more magic sauce. We're putting lots of magic sauce on it today. The pinball code that you write, that's going to connect to not only Johnny5 and TMI.js to talk to the people, but you're also going to connect to OBS. And that allows you to do, you know, fantastic things. Now, I didn't put the module you need. You need like a WebSockets plugin for OBS, but... You know, that's a whole different discussion, but it allows you to do cool things like vary stuff on the screen, change up the point distribution, right? Some kind of indicator. So there's a lot of on-screen stuff going on to allow you to, to broadcast, hey, these are the new point layouts, you know, da -da, promote, promote, you know, that kind of fun thing. And then your app, as I said before, is probably a web app. It's the simplest way to go. Make it mobile friendly so people can pull up on the mobile phone while they should be working at work, but no, they're, they're playing cat pinball that kind of thing. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Well, if you like this video, please subscribe. If you like this kind of content, if you want more details about it, then by all means support me on Patreon there. I give, uh, I give out, uh, lots of more details on my ideas. You can always go and look at them on my, on my interactive blueprints area on my website. I always put the blueprints out there for everyone to see for free. And you're smart enough. You can probably just figure it out. But if you want a little more detail or ask questions, get some input, get yourself started to make whatever you want to do, then uh, by all means, check me out on Patreon. So hopefully you found this interesting, maybe inspired you to make a million zillion dollars someday, building an interactive cat pinball empire. Who knows? You never know. Give it a go. Remember, life is all about experience points. So go out there and get some. <laughs>